Hello people of YouTube, I hope you're well. Welcome to my living room and to episode number 31 of my creative podcast. I'm Selma and you can find me on the internet, that's mostly on Instagram and Ravelry as Selma's Knits. Welcome if you're a new viewer, welcome back if you are a returning viewer. Thank you for joining me today, it's always lovely to have you with me for a new episode. I am recording today in what is far from ideal conditions, that is to say it's very dark outside so there is very little light in my living room and I don't have fancy studio lights to light me up so I don't know I don't know how good or bad the quality of the image will be but we'll give it a try also I have been quite sick for the last five days I'd say and uh, today is the first day I feel well enough to record something I'm still not Completely healthy, definitely not. I still cough from time to time, but it's much better than the previous days. So here I am. I have several finished objects to show you, although we will be jumping in the past a bit too, so I can show you what I offered for Christmas because Christmas was last week and I offered these projects. <laughs> so I, I recorded something beforehand. But anyway, uh, well, you can grab your drink and grab your whip. And let's go. The first finished object is a pair of Trondheim mittens by Pia Kameborn. It's a pair of color work mittens, very, uh, I was about to say very simple, but not really, no. Here they are. I really, really like them. I finished them two days ago and I washed and blocked them yesterday. Um, to tell the truth, I haven't been able to uh, hang them to dry like I normally do on my on my mitten blockers because I made them with slightly bigger needles than usual and they don't they are well they don't hold as well because they're slightly larger than <coughs> than uh, my usual mittens. They are slightly larger, but they still fit really well. It's just that I have a bit more space in the in the hand part, uh, but the the thumbs are are just perfect, so it's it's really no problem. But I have knit several of uh, PS patterns already, and I know that um, she has a much I'd say looser gauge than me. So she uses much smaller needles, and I have tried in the past, and I knew that they definitely wouldn't fit if I used the the needle size which was uh, required in the pattern. So I used a size 3 and I used the same size for the cuff and for the hand. I could have used a slightly smaller size but for some reason I didn't change on the first one and I didn't want to change on the second one either. But I wanted them to be similar so that's why. Um, it just means that the cuff is a bit wider but it's not it's not really a problem because that way I can just put the 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 wrist of of what I'm whatever I'm wearing as a top under the cuff and and it doesn't get pulled up or snagged or, or anything. So it's actually much more comfortable that way. But but if I were to make them again, I would probably use half a size smaller for the cuffs. I also made the Latvian braids in opposite directions on both hands just because it looks cool like that way. Uh, this is not a pattern which I would recommend for uh, beginner color work knitters because in the cuff you have a lot of, uh, of rows where you have three colors together and fairly long floats in the back so you need to to cross them so that it doesn't so that you that they don't snag when you put them on you know. To be honest that's probably why they took me much longer to make because well um, Ravelry says I started them mid-November and I paused them for quite some time because they were the Christmas presents and other stuff I wanted to focus on but I would I, I, I am fairly sure that it's also because I was getting pretty annoyed with the cuff and the three colors so I needed a break because when I got back to them it actually took me two days to finish them I I, I really like them they are so nice. I really love that kind of mittens. I might I might make myself a full collection of, of winter color work mittens. Winter mittens. When else than winter could I actually wear mittens? Anyway, 
these are super fancy and I really like them. I got the yarn as a kit in Patricia's um, online shop. She is uh, P Fortune or Knitography on, on social networks. She is also the one who made these mitten blockers, which are the prettiest mitten blockers ever. And, uh, and I really love them. But anyway, I'm I'm fairly sure you can find the kits in other shops. I think the Wooly Thistle also has them. So basically you need the four colors there. You need the, the, the rust, the ochre, light blue and dark blue. I use very small amounts of these two colors and a little more than half a, half a yarn ball because it's 50 gram balls for, for the light blue. So a little over half a half a bowl for the light blue and a little a little under half a bowl for the dark blue. Uh, I made an experience as well with these. Uh, I actually knit them with uh, circular needles but nine inches, 23 centimeters. It's the first time I knit um, full mittens on such short needles and it was fine. <laughs> it it worked well well it was easier on the on the main part of the hand and on the cuff most likely because of the three colors but uh in a whole yeah rather good experience i had to change to magic loop um uh, when it got too tight but other than that it's pretty fine <laughs> the second finished object which i have well which i have with me no i don't actually have it with me but um i have what i used to make it with me it's it I don't have it with me because it was a birth present for my um for my cousin who got a baby daughter in October and we visited them last week. So I actually finished it on the train to go there, but it went fine. It's embroidery and it's a Starry Nights kit by uh Once Upon in Foi and Overa Soir. I bought it at a festival in October and no November in November and I yeah it it went well I took me something like 10 days to finish it but it's because I don't actually take that kind of stuff to the office with me I like my co-workers but they would definitely put me put a sign on my door saying official grandma of the of the office you know uh, they yeah <laughs> they they are okay with me knitting now but I think embroidery would be a, would be a step too far Anyway, so in the kit you get the um, hoop, <clears throat> the linen fabric for the background, um, a needle and uh, transfer paper to transfer the, 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 the motif on the, on the fabric. You get uh, two metallic threads. There is the um, glow in the dark one. I cannot show you that it glows in the dark, but so you will have to take my word for it, but it does and a silver one it's actually one th one thread of silver and two two nylon threads to make it more um more sturdy i'd say so yeah you got these two and you get algerian silk which i actually put away already because i don't like having it lying around but i have this piece which stayed for some reason in the bag with the rest it's uh, it's silk, so it's really really pleasant to uh, to do embroidery with, and then you get the instruction leaflet and the patterns to use. Basically, the leaflet has explanations for the the, the stitches used and general instructions on how to make it, and the shapes are this way. So you use the transfer paper and. Uh, and I, I used a um, uh, pencil to really press hard and transfer the shapes onto the fabric and it just works like a charm. I decided to do all 12, uh, yeah I didn't say what it actually is, it's constellations and it's the zodiac signs, the zodiac constellations. So you get, well, I decided to do all 12 in the right order and I didn't embroider the names under because you can do that but I didn't have time for it since as I was saying I finished the background stars on the train on my way to see my cousin and yeah so I used I used um, 
an acrylic paint pencil pencil pen <clears throat> an acrylic paint pen in a silver shade and it worked really well it looks it looks great and uh, my cousin loved it so i was really happy i put it on a on a on a on a rectangle of uh, we call that carton plume it's I, I don't know the english name for it it's basically carton but which has sort of foam in the middle so you have two layers of of thicker paper and a layer of foam in the middle and which means that it's it's cushioned you know it's exactly the way they had displayed it on their booth at the festival and that's what gave me the idea to uh, to actually make that for my cousin it's really it's really light so it's very easy to suspend it on a wall or just even put it on a on a shelf or something and yeah it looked really nice i used double sided adhesive tape <laughs> It's not the sexiest thing to use, but that's all I had at my disposal and it actually worked really well and was easy to use on the train. A success! It, there's nothing extremely compli complicated about it. Um, there is no fancy stitch. The most complicated one would be the, the, the one used for the stars. They call it the Smyrna cross stitch. Uh, it's really not complicated. Once you have done it once or twice, it's just you're on the roll. I'm drinking some um, Puka tea today. It's the Elderberry and Echinacea. It's still from my advent calendar, but since I was away quite a lot in the last week before Christmas, I missed on several days because I didn't bring the tea bags with me. And I've been finishing them slowly. I'm drinking it in one of the cups I got for my birthday. My birthday was celebrated late. Which is why it looks a bit more <clears throat> Christmassy and wintery than it should, because my winter is in autumn. But it's okay. I like that it it's so tall. You can put a lot of tea in there. I will now insert the short segment. I recorded this segment last week, uh, short before I left on the trip when I actually offered the hats. I stole the idea from from my friend Jaime, who does that on a regular basis because she she often doesn't have time to make. Um, to f record a full episode so she records <laughs> shorter segments which she then inserts and and like from the past into the into the the full length episode we will go there and come back in a minute hey 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 welcome to the past i want to apologize first for the light because it's almost half past 10 and it feels like it's night so the quality of the picture might not be so good it's just that this is the only time slot I had. I'm taking a train in two hours to go and visit my family and I will be offering the three hats which I'm going to talk about right now. So basically, yeah, no other opportunity to record this segment and we will make do. But yeah, apologies. The first hat I want to show you is the uh, Beloved Erin hat by Solène Quixloire. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm not sure it's available in English, but it's still very simple. So um, it I did regular ribs, not twisted ribs at the bottom because I didn't want to. And then it's double. Um, we call it we actually call it rice stitch, but I'm not so sure about the English name. But basically, instead of alternating every other row, you alternate every two rows. And the stitch is a bit thicker than it would be with the regular pattern it's very simple but it's also really nice i used leftover um cascade ecological wool for this one i really like the way it folds in the back it's very very um it's not stiff <laughs> it's fluid can i say that i added the pom-pom because i felt like it was needed <laughs> i'm destroying my hair my hair every time i take off the a hat but then I knit the French part, the French segment just a minute ago and I have two more hats to put on to show you so I will not do my hair until I'm done. You will have to bear with my mane. Let's call it that way. Uh, what can I say? It's very easy. It took me half a day to actually finish because it's pretty thick, um, it's pretty thick wool. It calls for Aran. I used so the cascade ecological wool is listed as bulky, but it's been in a cake for a long time, so it might have stretched a bit and gotten thinner than it would be normally. Very nice, quick hat actually. 
both but well both the first two projects which i have to show you the first two hats are very quick knits so they would be good ideas as last minute gifts if you needed one obviously not for christmas because this podcast will come out after christmas but yeah which is also a reason why i can tell you whom i'm offering the hats to this one goes to my brother's girlfriend i think it will be i think she will like it i hope she will like it. <laughs> we'll see that when she opens the present the second hat is also a free pattern on Ravelry. It's the uh, Bali hat by Tin Can Knits. It's very simple, but it's very effective. I actually really like the um, garter stitch section on the body. Gives a bit more originality to the to the to the hat because it's otherwise very simple. But yeah, this one goes to my brother, which is why it's a little big on me. But well, it's a little big, no. The ribs are stretchy enough that it will fit him and it still fits me, but it's a little long on my head. I used leftover Cascade Echo Eco Plus, I think, yeah. Cascade Eco Plus in navy and I had the same issue, let's call it that way, that the yarn had been in a cake for a long time and it might have stretched out a bit because this calls for a worsted weight, I think originally in the pattern and and the bulky or supposedly bulky cascade um, eco plus worked really well i don't know if you will see much because the navy maybe doesn't doesn't let you see the two sections but i find it really really nice and again this is a very quick knit it took me le less than a day to finish i'm not putting a pom-pom because it's not exactly my brother's style but if you wanted to you definitely could what I really like about this as well is that the goddess section goes basically to the top. And I find it actually very, very nice. And you still have decreases in the goddess section, but they're, I wouldn't say invisible, but very, very subtle. A nice second quick project. The last one is not as quick and it's not uh, something which I used leftovers for. And it's not even a free pattern for that, I apologize. It's part of the Charlotte Light accessories in uh, Carrie Bostick Hodge um, Matter Anthology number two, Simple Pleasures. So it's, it's only available in the book and I'm sorry for it, I guess. <laughs> I still wanted to show it to you because it's very nice. And um, <clears throat> I would say that if you want to reproduce it, it shouldn't be that difficult and it can still inspire you in finding a free pattern or or even buying the book because the book is full of very very nice stuff i like the crown i like when it makes a star or something like that so <laughs> to go back to the main point it's a very simple got to stitch hat it's two by two ribs on the bottom and, uh, as opposed to one by one by one on the other two hats i used hate and four ply by eden cottage yarn in the colorway steel it's merino cashmere and nylon which is why it's so soft you know so fluid again <laughs> i should i should try and improve my vocabulary <laughs> really to describe min knitting you know so this one took me longer than the others to make because i knitted completely I was starting on the decreases and that's when I recognized that I didn't have the right stitch count <laughs> because I forgot to actually do the increase row right after the ribs. Silly me. Um, <laughs> I was a bit annoyed but it wouldn't have worked and I didn't want to have to calculate the decreases with the number of stitches which I had so I just ripped it off completely and started again. I, I tried it on and I recognized that the um, brim was a bit tight. It's for my mother but we almost have the same head size, but maybe hers is a little bigger than mine. So I frogged it all and started again with a bigger needle size and without forgetting the increases after the ribs, which makes it much better. What can I tell you about it? Not that much. That was the only annoying part. The gorgeous stitch in the round is not the fastest thing to knit. I knit most of it on the train back from Marseille on Wednesday and was good mindless knitting. Yeah, if you have the, the the book and you haven't really paid attention to the smaller pieces in it, then maybe maybe this is worth maybe this is worth uh, looking into as well. 
because it's a very nice basic hat. I actually chose this yarn and this colorway because last time I visited my mother, she said that she doesn't really like the hat she currently has. And um, I thought I would make something that matches the shawl, which I knit her for her 60th birthday, which was with navy blue and gray. I hope she likes it. <laughs> Once again, that's the problem when you knit something. But the three people I'm knitting for this year are all knit worthy, so it's all fine. I am done telling you everything I had to about my Christmas presents this year, so I will go back to the present and <laughs> get on with what I was saying. Here I am, back to the present. I will show you my uh, one and only work in progress at the moment, since I finished the, the mittens. It's the Jacinta shawl by Amber O'Brien. It's a shawl. And I'm knitting it with a gradient um, cake from La Féfile, which I bought last year in March, I think. No, in May. It's starting to look like a shawl. Um, basically, you have the, the, the full length of the pattern is roll 1 to 145. And so you need to knit that fully once and then from row 27 to 145. And then once more in a short, well, a shorter part of it. So I'm basically, I'm a little over halfway the second repetition it looks really nice and you start seeing the you start seeing the change in color um, from the skein without actually having to uh, change skein or anything which is great it's nothing very complicated it's actually the the most transportable project which i have at the moment on my needles i haven't done any progress on the on the sweater the Mr. Rochester one because um, it's a bit big to be transported at the moment and then I had to focus on um, so I couldn't really take it on the train with me and I traveled a lot last week and it's a very the, the shawl is much more social as a as a project than than the sweater is because I'm up to the neckline and I need to count and stuff and yeah whereas this one you need to follow the pattern but it's still easy enough um, that that you can actually have a conversation or, or or do something else while you're actually knitting and it doesn't take that much space either so there's that and that's why i've been working on it way more than on the sweater but i will i will go back to the sweater next week the christmas call which i organized is now over and i have sorted through the entries and validated the ones which were uh which complied with the rules which I had which I had set up and I will be doing the uh, I will be picking the winners next week because I just have too much to think in the next couple of days too much to think too much to do so I will just I will really be taking my time to do it next week there were some really really nice prizes so I want to thank again everyone who participated and um, I'm not planning on organizing any new cal in the foreseeable future but it might still happen you never know i will be i already know that i will be taking part in two year-long calls in the french community and probably others which will come come up later in the year i will try to find the time to record a special episode uh, next week to show you what is in my make nine list for for um 2019 um there, it's the nine projects which I really want to make. I will most likely make others, but these nine I really want to make. And I will, yeah, I will, I will try to find to find time to to do that to uh, tell you a bit more in detail about them. That's it for today. I uh, well, actually, I hope that you had a really nice Christmas time and that you will have a really fine New Year's Eve and beginning of the new year. I know that it's not the easiest time of year uh, for everyone. So the most important thing to remember is to take care of yourself. So I hope you do that and I wish you all the very best. Until next time, enjoy your knitting, your sewing, your everything. Um, have a very good time and I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye.